everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Takatane Podcast. I'm Kaima Tini. Today we're talking to Andrew Rowe, who's an energy healer, spiritual mentor, and coach, in which his mission is to guide you on your journey back to your authentic self by helping you release the limiting beliefs or keeping you stuck in your false self. Andrew and I are going to discuss living your authentic self, using your energy to create a dream life, his experience with being addicted to drugs and healing people, and much more. I'm super inspired by Andrew's story and how far he came with his journey from being addicted to drugs and healing people. Me and I were just talking about it before we got started, and he's just so amazing. I'm super excited for you guys to hear this conversation, and thank you so much for coming on, Andrew. It's such a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Of course. So, like, I know we kind of covered me and you this a little bit earlier, but, but like when did you got to get into like your spiritual like spiritual journey? Yeah, so um the spiritual journey kind of took place, you know, for a while. I mean, we're all on one. And I think that's what we have to remember mm-hmm. is that we're actually all on our own spiritual journey, but we're just not aware of it. But for me when it really started to take form was when I had the drug psychosis when I was at university linked to ketamine but it was mirrored with a spiritual awakening and I I started to kind of hear voices see auras and I didn't have a space that was grounded and supporting of it so I immediately believed that it was somehow bad right I I grew up with Catholicism Christianity and I really was in this idea that either it's good or bad and there's no in between there's no spectrum and so um, I started thinking that I was evil. And so obviously, you know, that was pretty horrible. And I had really just two options was either kill myself or do I just, you know, use my power of my will to realize that I'm not and that I am light. And so I chose that and went on this journey with yoga, cards, you know, retreats, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then in during lockdown, I slipped my disc while I was meditating uh letting go of anger and jealousy which is wild um but again it was such an indicator of the power of of, of energy um and started doing different modalities because i had this time off work and I realized i was quite good at it and then yeah march 2021 i set up my business and we're in 2023 and yeah i have a pretty successful business and i'm helping a lot of people change their lives and remember that they're love at core and that's 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 my journey like literally summarized in about (laughs) three minutes (laughs) yeah that's so amazing like like these my mom and my sister are basically into those type of things so I was like like I growing up I was never kind of into spirituality besides like meditation like in that terms because I was like because every time my parents like my sister my mom will always like convince me to do something with like in terms of spirituality, I'm like, this is so boring. Like, why am I supposed to do this? But then, like, during the pandemic, my anxiety got so bad that, like, I really just, like, I started meditating. And then I was like, I can't get away from this. Like, I this is, like, too good. Like, this is, like, I don't know why I never started this before. Like, I don't know why, what, what I was thinking. I love that. And you're what? You're, you're not even 18. And you're, like basically saying how amazing meditation is i mean that's awesome you know what i was doing when i was your age i was probably playing like playstation 2 games and you know being silly and not you know what i mean like i think that's so amazing and i think this is definitely showing us that like the new generation you guys are so much more awake than the even me you know i'm a millennial um and you know i i just think it's incredible like doing meditation at that age yeah hats off kudos mm, thank you so much I know it's definitely hard like I was never like into that things like it was hard for me to get started that first in terms of meditation because I was like how am I supposed to sit down for about 25 minutes and just don't think anything at all that's honestly the most boring thing I ever heard in my life not to think anything but like yeah, time go on. Like as like when you do it more, you're like, oh, I'm a pro. Like this is the best thing ever. Like like because if you do it more and um, you you will get better at it. You know, for sure, totally, totally, totally. 
like how do you like getting into spiritual stuff like kind of like help you as a person during that difficult time I mean just there's no words to say like how impactful being connected spiritually and 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 believing that there's something outside of ourselves um whether that's god source energy whatever you want to call it that you we're not just these like beings on this planet with no purpose has been monumental in my in my growth i mean last year um, my dad died in june and then one of my really close friends died in october um and then uh in January, I got hit by a pickup truck on the motorway in Thailand. So I had a quite a lot of stuff happen to me in a very short period of time. And honestly, the only reason I was able to like move through it all with a smile on my face. And, and you know, of course, it's hard when you lose your your father and when you and all those kind of things and your friend. But you also know that there's more to it. Right. You know, it's not like the, the soul continues to to move forwards it's just it's just the physical experience that no longer exists right and so mm-hmm. for me my my spirituality has like supported me so much throughout throughout my life um because it's it's just it is why i'm so strong and so resilient um yeah yeah because like you never know like how much like something so impactful for you until like you try it because like when you lose a loved one like I remember losing my grandmother a couple years ago and I was heartbroken I was a mess and like it was just honestly very hard to go through and I'm still not okay to this day I'm so upset about it I'm so grieving but like no one really gets over the loss of their loved one like even though they might be um getting better over the time that goes on the grief really never leaves you and basically every time that you kind of think about it like oh did this actually happen like I can't believe I can see anymore but then like when you dive into those type of things like spirituality yoga meditation like it'll kind of kind of like relax you in some way be like okay well this is not my fault like this things happen this is a part of life like you just kind of have to push mm-hmm. yourself and get through it because I know every person is different in terms of processing grief and how to get through it I know I was 11 years old like when this thing happened but then at that time like I knew what it was I knew kind of I, I was at that age where I was like okay well I know what death means. I know what this means. I can't see it anymore. Mm -hmm. But at the time, like with meditation, like I I wasn't introduced to meditation at that time. So I had like no kind of process in terms of kind of getting better. But that's why I kind of wish I had when I like at that time is I like, oh, I wish meditation yoga I was introduced to me at that time so I can kind of process it better. But you know. Things always happen, but the like you always like get introduced to it later in life, you know. Like it's just like it's better to be introduced to it than never be introduced to it at all. Yeah, absolutely. And I look, I lost my grandma when I was eleven as well. Um, but I had no, do you know what I mean like there was no understanding really because well, I, society doesn't really prepare us for death either. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something that um people. Uh, are afraid to talk about it's something you know and I think there's something you you said about grief and I think grief grief like you know time is a healer and obviously as time goes by it's easier to deal with it and of course you know we have these moments where we're going to feel sad or, or whatever but actually in actual fact it's if we can learn to not be attached to the the person um and know that the you know the memories will always live on, you know, that connection is always there, but it's just not in a physical way anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. The grief is a lot easier to deal with. It's actually, the grief actually comes from the attachment, like wanting um, to bring them back, you know, wanting to have those, those like deep moments again or, or whatever. And yeah, for me, what really helped was just to be like, it's hard. Of course it's easier said than done, but it's just being able to be like, okay, you know, the spirit lives on the physical body's gone like I I literally was with my dad when he died like I saw him you know I held his body um and it was such a 
a huge moment for me because one, I'd never been so close to death before. Um, and two, I realized, oh, he's just a, like a body. Do you know what I mean? Like he's not actually there. He's not, he's not really, you know what I mean? Like the soul's mm -hmm. not there. And then that actually makes it a lot easier to, for me personally, to have dealt with the, with the grief when you yeah, realize, oh. Like when you like think about grief, like everyone processes grief differently. But when you think like, oh, like when you think about all these memories you have that person, like that's you should keep that after they pass away. Because like, of course, you won't see their physical form ever again. They can still kind of see you grow as a person, even though you can't see them as a person or even see yeah. them ever again and like you should think that basically of course you can't see them but they can see you and what you're doing like yeah it's actually probably the best part of it is that like even though you're not here on earth they can still see you up in heaven or wherever kind of place you like to call i know everyone likes to call it a different place but um it's just like everyone like when you're doing grief they're like oh they can't see me my actions i wish you were here but they can in a way you know Mm. yeah and I mean when you can you when you attune yourself to it you can see them or you can hear them or you can feel their presence you know like it's we we all have that ability um as well but you have to believe it and you have to be open-minded to it mm -hmm. exactly and like a couple of years ago you were dealing with self-esteem issues and all and all of these things like how did you kind of remember like how much you were loved and kind of building like your self-esteem during that time. Yeah. So I think, you know, we all have self-esteem issues and, mm -hmm. you know, I've worked with like hundreds and hundreds of clients. And the, one of the main things that we always work on is self-worth um, because self-worth is like key to it's, it's the keys to the kingdom. Basically, if we were mm -hmm. to use uh, that kind of expression, like if you want to live, you know, the idea of heaven and hell, it's all, um, from my perspective is within ourselves so you can create yeah. hell on earth you can create heaven on earth but it's your choice um yeah. and when you work on your self-worth and your and your that kind of part of you you can start to really open your mind to creating a beautiful reality um and so for me it was a journey right it's it, it's a lot of the work that i do which is a lot of energetic um releasing and releasing belief systems but it's also a lot about going back to the inner child and looking at different different programs you know maybe your father was absent and then kind of helping the inner child understand that it's not because of the little boy that the father was absent but because of the adult you know what I mean and so it's about mm -hmm. kind of deconditioning that because a lot of our self-worth issues come from our um conditioning when we're when we're growing up right so mm -hmm. we've got um unconditional love and then we have conditional love and unfortunately most of us will have received some form of conditional love just because that's what our parents received as well but mm -hmm. then when we receive conditional love as kids we then start to put conditions on our experience and we start to say oh okay well I can only be loved if I get good grades at school or I can only be loved if da 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 and so I essentially went on a journey to just unravel all of that and realize it, that it's all lies. Like none of that is the truth, right? But we make it as our truth. And then when you start to unpick it and start to be like, okay, well, what's my new truth? What's the, what's the real, the reality? And the reality is that when you were born, you were this little baby that was so innocent, so full of love, so worthy. Not one moment did anyone look at you and think, oh, God, you're so unworthy. And not one moment did you as the baby think, I'm so unworthy. The only oh. reason that you started to lose touch with that was because you attached yourself to the conditioning that you grew up with, which is totally normal, because that's the only way you were going to keep safe and the way you were going to feel like you could belong and, and survive. But the truth is, you are worthy, you have always been worthy, and nothing can ever take your worth away. No matter what trauma you've been in, no matter what you've experienced, your worth is infinite and indestructible. And when you can really understand that from every aspect fiber of your body, then the self-worth issues just melt away. Exactly. Like, when you, like... Growing up, I dealt with self-esteem issues. Like, like, I was very shy, no confidence at all. Like, I didn't do anything at all besides, like, 
watch my friends' baseball games, as we were talking about before, but, like, like, growing up, it was very kind of hard, because I was kind of felt that I was um, in the presence of, like, my brother, and, like, he was getting more attention. I just kind of felt like I was a shadow of my brother, and what I just didn't feel seen, I didn't think, like, people realize I was there even though I was you know like it's just like that's kind of how I felt and this is like it kind of lowered my self-esteem a little bit because like when that happened this like I don't know how to explain it it's like like when you that happened you're like is it even worth doing things if this is how I'm being treated or how I feel Mm -hmm. and that kind Mm -hmm. of damaged me because like even though that's happening like you do not know what to do and like how to build yourself a scene even though I do love my brother deeply and care about him so much and he deserves all the attention he deserves but then at the same time I'm like what about me like how can I do that mm-hmm. for myself as well like how can I build myself up and actually get the same way and same treatment as my brother is being treated at that moment mm-hmm yeah, I mean, look, it's such a common thing for sibling rivalry. You know, it's it's actually comes from the survival of the fittest, right? It's this mm-hmm. kind of dog eat dog world, um, and it's just it, it's you know, I had the exact same thing with my brother. You know, he was he was incredibly intelligent, and I just was not very good at school. And there was, I always felt like my dad like loved him more or, or cared about him more. But then when you get to the you know the adult stage and you start to really look back at it, and you're like you know, maybe, maybe it was the case, maybe it wasn't the case, but at the end of the day, like, I don't need my mother and my father's love in order to feel worthy. I don't need, mm-hmm. you know, to be, and I think, and, and of course it takes time to get to that place, but when we can start to stop comparing ourselves, because at the end, when we compare ourselves, it, it suggests that like, it's kind of coming from a scarcity mindset, right? That there's only mm-hmm. so much that's available for everyone um so when you can start to disidentify yourself with that and just be like actually you know what I'm a badass I'm me I'm exactly how I'm meant to be and you just own who you are then it doesn't really matter so much like all that kind of stuff but of course growing up you know especially when we're in in our teenage years and even young adult years like sibling stuff it can become really intense right because there's this feeling of competition and then there's where whenever there's a competition there's always going to be a winner and a loser um and and then it can feel quite uncomfortable yeah it definitely can it's like when you're growing up you think like oh everything's a rivalry like like you think like everything's a competition but then like it's not competition it's just competition like in your mind in your head space because you think like I need to win over my parents' lobbies. My sister or her brother is getting more attention than me because of this thing he's doing or she's doing. But then, like, you're like, you have to think, like, oh, my brother um, and my father probably get have more interest in me. Now. You know, like, it's just like, I do not need my parents' love or my siblings' love to actually feel worthy. Because, of course, we have different interests and different kind of, ways we kind of want to grow up but then like when we're older we're probably gonna be like why did I think that like why did I kind of have that mind space and stuff but like that's kind of like how you just feel in the moment because like of course you want to have that rivalry against your sibling that's kind of how sibling relationships I know a lot of sibling relationships kind of like to be like that I know I like to kind of win every single time I'm very kind of competitive but it's like if, if I am not competitive, I'm like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do to win over my brother? Like, what am I supposed to do, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, how did you kind of live up to your mission to at least the limiting beliefs that are keeping you back? How did I live up to that mission? Yeah, like how, like how did you kind of live up to that, like, um like in terms of limiting beliefs like how do you kind of like kind of do that every single day and kind of push yourself yeah so we have to look at our limiting beliefs as they're they're just there as a way of keeping us safe right 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, if I have a belief, I'm worth, I'm unworthy of receiving love. That belief is there because I don't feel safe in receiving love because maybe when I received love, it was painful or it was taken away from me or whatever it may be. So when we start to look at our limiting beliefs, rather than from a perspective of anger and resentment, but rather from a perspective of, oh, okay, this is here because it wants to protect me. It wants to keep me safe. You already start to release some of the tension and the attachment the the main thing is it's it's always to do with like if you if you um focus on something over and over again it's just going to persist right the resistance causes persistence so if you resist the fact that you feel unworthy of love you're going to feel more and more unworthy of love but if you just accept okay i feel i feel unworthy of love but this isn't the truth the truth is you know uh i'm actually fully worthy of love, but I can't see it yet. And then you start to just look at like, okay, so this belief system that I have, which is I'm unworthy of love, how does it serve me to have this belief? Like, why am I choosing to still hold on to this belief? And it might be, oh, well, because, you know, um, believing I'm unworthy of love keeps me, as I said, safe. No one, no one hurts me. Um, It also allows me to keep people at a distance. Um, It also allows me to play the victim, whatever it is, you know, there's always going to be a kickback. And then you look at like what you're trying to learn because we're always just trying to learn, right? Our growth, our soul's path is just towards evolution, is to growth. So if you have this limiting belief, your soul is trying to teach you something through this experience. And so when you start to like break it down and see it more from a uh, more from a logical mind perspective, you start to like be like, oh wait, actually, so. This is why do I have this belief in the first place? This is crazy. Oh. Um, and so just by doing that, just by being a little bit more inquisitive rather than taking things at face value and being a, and having more awareness, you can start to let go of your limiting beliefs. Then obviously, oh. like with me, I then use like energy stuff and, and all the stuff that I've learned within my own practices. But just that in itself will start to shift things you it basically you no longer become the experiencer of your life you become the observer you become like the like oh this is interesting you know um andrew is uh you know afraid of this oh i wonder why you know rather than being like Mm -hmm. oh my god like this means so much about me yeah because like not like i know like a lot of people kind of like show and like kind of like to threaten that person based off of what they're scared of on the inside on that person like you're like like how can I make this better because you do not know like why they're scared of that like something could have happened in their life personally that they did not talk about and that's the reason might be the reason why they are feeling that way or might be scared that day like you just kind of mm-hmm. do not know like kind of what's going on on behind the scenes instead of making fun of them for it you should be like is there anything I can do to actually kind of help you get over this challenge I know it might be hard for you and like is this any way I can help you and and besides this being kind of dramatic about it and making fun of for what they're feeling because like you may never know how they're feeling on the inside they might be feeling self-doubt about how they're feeling and Mm -hmm. and to know if you have their support and everything it will make you feel like much like better in terms of how you Mm -hmm. feel Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And like, how can, like, did your drug-induced experience kind of like awake you as a person? Like back, like when it happened for you a couple of years ago, like, did it did kind of awaken you? I think it's because it, because it threw me into a completely different reality and started, and, and, and so then I started really questioning what I was experiencing. Um, and, you know, because the yes it was when I was doing drugs that I was having these experiences but then I it, it happened they were continuing when I wasn't on the drugs anymore and so it was this kind of I, I can only say like a forced awakening in some ways because yeah I started to um unpick reality right started to notice lots of things that we maybe aren't aware of until we start to waken up or disconnect ourselves from the matrix um and in that movie the matrix is a really interesting movie minus like the fear induced like machine stuff that we're all gonna you know we're plugged in on a spaceship somewhere or whatever that's that's nonsense um but like definitely the idea of um 
being like this is a simulation of our soul right it's hard to explain what that means but it's like every experience that we have we're constantly communicating with the universe and one of the things that i realized and experienced through the drug psychosis was that communication like oh. i became so heightened to the communication with the universe and started picking up on all of these different things and signs and and experiences so yeah i'm i'm so grateful for that it was the most horrible horrific time of my life but now i can look back and say hey andrew you wouldn't be the person that you are today without it mm, right like you do not know how kind of how to grow as a person until like something happens and it kind of wakes you as a person mm-hmm, totally in March of 2021, you started a business and within a year and a half, you had six figures and changed many people's lives. Like what topics do you kind of discuss with your clients to make change in their life? So whenever I work with clients, it's always it's it's always led by my clients. Um, the main thing that I focus on is helping people become more authentic. And what does that mean? It means stepping more into their soul self, like removing their ego and moving more into the soul aspect of them. And so when they work with me, we look a lot at self-worth. We look at loads around relationships. So mother, father relationship, sibling relationship, because that's going to have a huge impact on them. Um, mm -hmm. And then it really depends. It all change. It's it, every person's different, right? Sometimes it may be beliefs around money. Sometimes it may be beliefs around success. Sometimes it may be beliefs around um, relationships and what relationships mean. Um, so it just it depends on who I'm working with. Mm -hmm. It's like like what do you kind of see as most of your clients say? Like, do you think you more get kind of like authentic sessions rather than um, daughter type of sessions? Like, what do you kind of see more sessions as time goes on? Um. What do you mean by that? Sorry, can you just clarify the question? Oh, sorry, but I I, I kind of had a feeling I was going to say, but like, what type, like, what, like, what type of sessions do you see more often? Like, do you see more of a kind of like authentic more sessions uh, more often, or do like is there any specific um session you see more often than others? Yeah, so I like I said um before um definitely stuff around self worth. Uh, that comes up so often, all the time, actually. Um, but yeah, many people work with me because they want to be more authentic. So every session brings them back towards um, their authenticity. That's amazing. Like, how can people give back to like their authentic self if they're struggling? Like, I know like a lot of people are like, how can I get back to it? But like, in case we were listening and going through that, like, how can people kind of bring their stuff into the authentic self? They just have to look at what's preventing them from being authentic you know what a, and and start to question if that's the truth if that you know if someone wants to be more gregarious and charismatic but they're very shy um the fact that they want to be gregarious and charismatic means that that's a reality that's possible for them otherwise they wouldn't have it in the first place so they have to realize oh okay so i have this feeling for a reason i just need to now break through work through my beliefs my fears my worries so i can step into that new version of myself amazing like uh, that seems like honestly like easy peasy type of thing to me honestly but um I just want to thank you so much Andrew for coming on the podcast I really appreciate it like your story and mission is so inspiring it has made an impact on my life and many others I really appreciate you taking the time I know your story will impact so many people and thank you so much everyone for listening and thank you Andrew again for coming on Thanks very much. Of course. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take Thank care. You. Bye.